Welcome, welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotar V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. And you'll, hopefully you'll get to see this pretty soon. And of course, we are doing Torah Tamima and just moving slowly along with Genesis, that first parsha. And in fact, the first, we're just on verse two. That's what we're on. Okay. So, and what's nice, I think, is it gives us a little more clarity. I mean, this stuff is very dense, very difficult, and words that are hard to understand and sentences that involve, uh, well, a lot of interpretation, a lot of imagination. Uh, so, anyway. Hey, really hey Rabbi, before yeah. we get into this, because it really yes. has to do with this, yes. uh, my daughter and I are re-watching Supernatural, okay. the TV series. Oh, yeah. In the 11th season, the very first one, actually, or, well, it comes from the, the previous one also, but they release Darkness. And explain that darkness was there before everything. So we're going to go into that. And uh, yeah, and has that, you know, it's just, it was just, she, and they, it's a she. <laughs> but uh, it's, it was very interesting how mm. they've dealt with it. And it has to do with the mark of Cain. Huh. Okay. It's the curse. Yeah, it's part of the curse. Yeah. And is this a documentary or is it a. No, it's supernatural. It's a, uh, it's, it was a TV program. Got it, got it. Yeah, because right. I'm familiar with it. All right. Well, tohu vavohu. Yay. Oh, my gosh. These words, right? Uh, tohu, Rashi was saying, you know, it has to do with taha, which means astounded, something like that. Uh, vohu, hmm, void, something like that. Uh, these are not easy words. At any rate, here we go. Tanya. So it is taught in a early source, right? One that precedes the year 200. Tohu Kav Yarok. It is a green circle. Still got to use, I promise you, a lot of imagination here. Shemakif et kol ha'olam, which surrounds the entire universe. Shemimenu yatzach Which From which darkness emerged. How do we know this? Shneemar, there's a pasuk, there's a verse that says in verse in uh, cha, uh, the 18th Psalm 18, Yashet Hoshet Sitro, he placed darkness as his screen, Svivotav, and uh, all around him. And there's a a Torah Mima on this. So let's take a look at this. Here we go. And he says, the end of the verse is, the darkness of water, or the darkness of mayim aveshchakim, meaning clouds, ave avim are clouds, mayim are water, shchakim is again another word for heavens, but l'shachek, l'shachek, not l'shachek, but l'shachek means to like pound, right? To pound things together. And Sfarya, I thought, gave an interesting translation as thunderclouds. So again, very descriptive and uh, not real clear, but anyway, halamadata, so you learn. Shekav hachoshech, right? Because it says, uh, it says svivotav around him, right? So that's why it's a circle that the circle of the darkness, makif et hashamayim, or the line of darkness, surrounds the heavens. We got, we haven't finished, so we're gonna go on and hopefully get a little more clarity. But this is this, as I said, it's just moving us along a little bit on this. So let's see. Here we go. Bohu, and with regards to Bohu, Elu Avanim, these are stones, Hamafulamot, which are round, Hameshukaot, that are sunk bitahom in the great depth, Shemehem Yotzemayim, from which water is extracted. It comes out from these, these stones. And how do we know that? We have another verse. So really, you know, the fact that we're doing it this way is showing that we're looking into literary, literary meaning, 
right? Not scientific meaning, but literary meaning, right? Isaiah chapter 34, venata aleha kav, there we go, right? The tohu, right? He stretched upon it the line of uh, tohu, the avne vohu, and the stones of bohu. Yes, Golda. Yeah, I flipped over to Isaiah 18, which I think is very interesting that it's 18. Yes. And it has to do with David uh, getting out of the clutches of Saul. Yes. That's yes. Psalm 18. That's Psalm 18. It's Psalm 18. Uh, not, yeah, and, I, you know, I, so having to do with life and stuff. Psalm and, victory. And, you know, yes. Yeah. Yeah, right, it's cool. but it's, just, it's 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 very cool. Oh, they say it's ropes of death it's and comfort, you know, but something about shale and things like that. But yes. but very interesting. It is very interesting. It's a long psalm. It is quite lengthy. Yes, and uh, yes, and uh, oh, what God. there I think he is ascribing to God in Psalm eighteen. He is wanting to give God the credit for saving his life and for yeah. giving him his victory. He doesn't want to take personal recognition for it and in describing god in these ways he is describing the incredible power of the divine of god right. so, yeah. yeah yeah i need the context that it comes from to That's actually good. to okay. really understand that yeah good. okay so anytime you want me to look something up let me know because i right. have it stuck in front of me and okay. if i don't remind if i don't remember the rest of the class can remind me okay okay so let's hear so what's this mafulamot right Mefulamot, heim avanim chazakot. These are strong stones, velachot, and wet. So they like, it's interesting, right? They're strong, wet stones, maybe ice, maybe ice, I don't know. Umi dichtiv kav tohu avne vohu. And because it says in the verse, the line of tohu and the stones of bohu, anu so from this we learn that the tohu is a line avanim, and the vohu is avanim is these stones crystals but avanim there's another word for crystal even is definitely a stone but it could be a stone of ice vida demikan yesh lahavi raya and know that from this one can bring a proof to the opinion of those who say, who are of the opinion, that darkness was its own, its own creation. In other words, that darkness was something that was actually actively creative, and not that it's just the absence of light. That darkness itself is something, is something, right? It's like, in a way, it sounds to me almost like zero, right? Because zero is nothing, but zero is something. And having that concept of zero is actually profound, right? It totally changes how we can process arithmetic and mathematics and things like that to know that nothing is something. Yes, Lauren. Well, I mean, there's a word for ice, too, and it doesn't say ice. No, it doesn't say nice. You're right. You're right. I was just trying to put together how a stone that was strong, right, a strong, powerful stone could also be wet. And I was thinking of the fact that ice can be very strong, okay, and yet it's also wet under the right circumstances. So it's just... I'm playing around with it. I'm not, believe me, I wouldn't go to the mat over it, but just a thought. Maybe yeah. it's some kind of um, thing that we don't recognize that has some kind of fluidity and movement yes. to it, like something like silly putty or, you know, clay, but something that's very strong, very hard to break, yes. but also it has some fluidity that can be moved around, but not necessarily easily broken. Mm -hmm. The stuff um, in a lava lamp. Yeah, actually, I was thinking of lava. As I think method. that's maybe no, wax. Volcanic, volcanic yeah, it's a oil and water and whatever. Wow. Yeah, like volcanic, <laughs> volcanic rock, you know, which, by the way, is porous. 
and also strong and originally was liquid. So I don't know. Just uh, I think, though, he does say that it's uh, talks about Mayim. So let's see. OK, so he says, Ien barambam. he just gives us a cross reference here. He says, look uh, on this subject, right, from the sa same kind of thing in the Ramban, the Nachmanides commentary on the Torah, Parsha Shmut, in the in the uh, Parsha of Shmut, the Pasuk Mi Sam Pe La Adam. This is where uh, Moses is arguing with God that he is hard of speech, and God says to him, who put a mouth in human beings? And apparently Nachmanides has some kind of commentary here that would shed some light on what we're reading here. So if we have the time, you know, I have the time, I you know, I do have access to the Nachmanides commentary. And by the way, I believe it's also been translated and it's very philosophical and it's lengthy. Daha, so going on, Daha lefi mashikatuv kan, he says, according to what is written here, heve yesod hachoshek, we have to say that the foundation of the darkness, kav yarok, is a green light, shemimenu yotze choshek, Choshek, that darkness emanates from this green line. The hakav and the line, halohu davar mamashi. And if we're talking about a line, it is something tangible. Sheshayach to which to which the concept of creation applies. V'chein mashma, and likewise is implied, mimashachashiv besugyakan, uh, that from what is also accounted, mentioned, reckoned in this particular sugya, that, that means that Talmudic discussion, which is referenced, I believe, in Chagiga. Okay, uh, let's see if I've got the reference up here. Yes, so it's Chagiga Yudbet, because he says Ibn Ibn. Et uh, HaChoshech that he enumerates darkness amongst those things that were created on day one. And were it not a, a designated creation or a sign, in other words, in and of itself, a specific creation, then it wouldn't have been counted. It would have been part of a number of things uh, amongst Shinivru Ubafual that were physically created, that were actively created. Ulafize, and according to this, Yitpa'er Lashon Pasuk, the language, the actual language of the verse becomes clarified in Isaiah 45. Yotzer, or look at that, who forms light, Uvore Choshech, right? And creates darkness. It's in the context of the fact that darkness isn't simply the absence of light, that darkness is actually something created. Kevan Dishtebriotan, and that's because these two things, light and darkness, are actually two creations, two acts of divine creation. Okay. Next. So you can see, I mean, we're really going deliberately and slowly on this. Okay. Tohu vavohu, another reference to this. Tohu vavohu vechoshech apnei tohom. So it goes on to say, of course, in the verse, to, the earth was tohu vavohu and darkness over the surface of the deep. Baruch Elohim and a spirit or a wind from God, merachefet hovers al pnei over the surface of the waters. Nikan, and so from this we can infer, okay, she tohu vavohu, that tohu and vohu, choshech, darkness, ruach, wind, umayim, and water, kulam biyom were all created on the first day, because they're all mentioned there, right? So we'll see what he has to say about this. Uma de lo ketiv mefurash, and the fact that scripture doesn't 
state explicitly that they were created doesn't say anything about the creation of any of these items. Yesh Lomar, one could say, Mishum de Kol Ela Hem Kulam, because every one of these things are all Chelkei Haaretz, elements of the land, Asher Nivra, that was in fact created. So, so the fact that they aren't enumerated isn't significant. It just because it's what we're doing here is detailing out the earth that God had created, that was created. Merachefet, hovers. Darash Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi. So Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi uh, expounded, but initially, haya olam mayim b'mayim. The universe was water in water. Again, let's take a look at this from a more literary perspective. Shinemar, as it says, Baruch Elohim Merachefet Abneamayim, and a wind from God or a spirit of God hovering over the surface of the water. Chazdar, Asahu Sheleg, then he went back and made snow, Asahu Aretz, and then he made from that snow, he made the land. Shinemar, as it states, Kileshelleg Yomar, who Aretz. Because in the book of Job, chapter 36, it says, or 37, it says, for he says of the snow, it is Eretz, it is the land, it is land. And this is, of course, Yerushalmi, the Talmud Yerushalmi. And again, interestingly enough, it's tractate Chagiga. Let's take a look at what Rabbi Baruch HaLevi Epstein has to say. Yitachen betam hadrasha. And it would appear that in the reason of for this comment, to kashele, that the commentator uh, has this element of difficulty. In other words, what's the question, right? The question that he's answering regarding this, this particular verse, in other words, that he feels the verse is raising. Lama lo chashiv hakatuv gam briyat afar. Why doesn't the... Uh, scripture include the creation of earth. Lachain derish, and earth we're talking about, you know, sand, that kind of stuff, that kind of earth. Lachain derish, for that reason he expounds, ki afar nit have, that the um, the sand or the the earth uh, beca- came into existence. Min hamayim kidem faresh from water, as is explained. Ve'hine ba bavli chagiga. He says, and in the bavli, the Babylonian Talmud, because this is a quote from the Jerusalem Talmud, and same tractate chagiga tet vav aleph page fifteen a ita drasha. There is a, a an, an exposition alashon regarding the term merachefet to hover Beshem Ben Zoma in the name of Ben Zoma. Ben Zoma was one of the authorities. The Nidchet, but it's rejected. That interpretation is rejected in the Gemara. Velachen Hishmatnuha. And for that reason, we simply excluded it and don't mention it at all. Let's take a look. Another one. Right. Next verse, Yehi Or, let there be light. Melamed, that teaches, Sheha Or Biyom Rishonibra, that light was created on the first day. For Afal Pi Dichtiv, and that's despite the fact that it's written later on in uh, verse 17, Vayiten Otam, and God placed them, uh, in the firmament of heaven, referring to the sun, moon, and stars, which is on the fourth day. There was evening, there was morning, a fourth day. That was when the sun, moon, and stars were created. So to explain how light was created on the first day, but the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day, is they weren't suspended until that fourth day. So it wasn't so much that uh, 
that there wasn't light at that point. So let's take a look at what he says. And let's, let's see, here we are. Uh, right. Lashon ha He says that actually the question isn't so clear. Why, why is there a question, as he's saying? Right? In the fact that his objection, right, is coming from, he placed, it says in the verse, God placed them in the firmament of the heavens. In other words, the verse itself says that. So when you look at his answer, that on the fourth day he suspended them, well, duh, it's what it said in the verse, right? But Imkain, and if this is the case, it's, it's explained in itself. You don't need someone else to tell you that because it says he placed them there. That, that only the placing of these things was on the fourth day. So why does he have a problem uh, to say that they were created on the first day? It's not a problem. The text itself says that he placed them it, that's that the act of creation, so to speak, on the fourth day was placing them, putting them in their places. And so it seems like we're actually looking at the fact that there's some words that are missing here or some issues that are not being mentioned here. But Sarich Lomar, and what we need to say is, for Afal P. Dichtiv, that despite the fact that it says, Vayome Elohim Yehi Meorot Birki Hashamayim, that even though on the fourth day God says, Let there be luminaries in the firmament of the heavens, Uchtiv, and afterwards it says, Vahi Erev Vahi Vokayom Revi'i, there was evening and there was morning of fourth day. The Imkain Ikar Hakushiahi. So in that in that case, the essence of this difficulty that's being raised, he beemet milashon havaya. It is comes from the language of existence. Vai aso. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yehi, because God says, "Let there be." Right, I think it's this he here that we're referring to. Shahita bayom revi'i that he's saying, "Let there come, let there be on the fourth day." Umashni, and so it teaches that even though he says "let there be," it means "let there be suspended." You might say, right, that only the placing was on the fourth day. Just as it says, God placed them. And the fact that it says on the fourth day, let there be, it's an act of creation, sounds like it certainly, let there be luminaries. That has to do with the placing. In other words, still placing them, in other words, the sun, moon, and stars are all created on the first day, but the placing of where they were to be put was on the fourth day, and that still says, let there be, let there be. And this is a Good place, I think, for us to stop for now. And uh, we'll continue, God willing, tomorrow. Hey, Rabbi, when you were talking about the snow, yes. it, it, it jogs something in my memory that snowflakes, and I checked to make sure, are created by surrounding uh, water surrounding a piece of dust or pollen. Yes. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So if there's, you know, so the snow is is collecting the dust in the air and you know, the dust in the water, whatever it is, the little pieces of stuff and and bringing it down to be together. You know, something, together. yeah, I, I had not remembered that. I, I think I had seen that somewhere, but I sort of, yeah, it, but thank you for. It was yeah. just one of those. Oh, like, interesting. It, like, like yeah. I said with the Lauren before, you know, the stuff that's hiding in the back of your head that yeah. you don't remember on trivia night yeah <laughs> right yeah right. so i'm going to stop the recording here